GAC Sports Network welcomes you to the following presentation of the Great American Conference. Game two of day number three here in Fire Lake Arena in Shawnee, Oklahoma. Northwestern Oklahoma, the number three seed, trying to repeat what happened in our first game, and that being a lower seed getting the upset and moving to championship Sunday. Good afternoon, I'm Joey McWilliams along with Luke McConnell. The Northwestern Rangers, quite a game yesterday, quite an effort against Southwestern. The Bulldogs made a run, but ultimately it was the Rangers coming through and advancing. Yeah, the Rangers locked in defensively in the second half. They also did a nice job on offense shooting 51% in the win. They knocked down nine threes as well yesterday in the win over the Bulldogs. Just a great all around performance for the Rangers. Eight point victory for Northwestern. And meanwhile, the other semifinal, Arkansas Tech in a rivalry game in the quarterfinal, took out the number seven seed in Harding, but they were taking to the wire. Arkansas Tech 67, Harding 65. And it was a team effort. Taylor Peter, the GAC player of the year, didn't see much from him. We expect to see a little bit more from him today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just dealing with a bit of a bit of an injury sustained in the season finale at Southern Arkansas. But guys stepped up. Cassius Brooks, 17 points. Braden Tanner, the freshman out of Dardanelle, Arkansas. Also some big minutes off the bench for the Wonder Boys. And they'll be counted on again today against a really good Northwestern team. We get to the starters here for both these two teams. And as they're being announced, let's go ahead and talk about them right now. The number three seed in the tournament, Northwestern wearing the road dark uniforms, the black and red. Notice those red numerals with the no white trim around them. Those are always fun to get to talk about. Wearing number one, a 6'3 senior guard from Garland, Texas is Kennedy Milton. Wearing number three, a 6'6 sophomore guard from Powder Springs, Georgia, Cameron McDowell. Wearing number four, a 5'8 graduate student guard from Greensboro, North Carolina, Brian Free. Wearing number five is a 6'6 senior forward from Topeka, Kansas, Larry White. And wearing number 23, a 6'9 sophomore forward from Austin, Texas, Kabea. Shibangu. The Rangers, 17-12 on the year, 14-8 in GAC play, coached by Robbie Harmon in his second season in Alva. The Arkansas Tech Wonder Boys are the second seed in the tournament, and they grabbed a share of the conference championship this year. 18-4 in GAC play, 23-6 overall. The victory on Thursday against Harding. Starters look like this. Wearing number two is Taylor Peter, again, GAC Player of the Year, hometown boy from Russellville, Arkansas, 6'4", junior guard. Wearing number three is a six-foot junior guard, Cade Schaefer. He's also from Russellville, Arkansas. Number 11 is a six-foot junior guard from Chicago, Cassius Brooks. Number 12, a 6'8", junior forward from Tupelo, Mississippi, Josh Mitchell. And number 15 is a 6'8", junior forward from Buford, Georgia. Tommy Hammerai. The Wonder Boys are coached by Mark Downey in his eighth season in the program in two stints in Russellville. And finally at four, a 6 junior. Winner of this game moves on to take on Southern Nazarene, the number four seed who came away with a big victory, a 14-point win over Southeastern Oklahoma State in our opener today. And Nathan Kennedy. Their head coach, please welcome Mark Downey. Jerry the Bulldog in the house for the Wonder Boys today. Hope he didn't uh, do anything un inappropriate on the court there, Joey. Don't need to, we're already lacking some towel folks at times throughout the day, so hopefully Jerry didn't leave a mess on the court there. Well, Jerry says fight on, so. He does say uh, fight on. He does indeed. Absolutely. I We've got a uh, yeah. suit game. Both coaching staffs in suits as well, Joey. <laughs> Gotta love that. Those are rare nowadays. I think Samantha did want to see if uh, Jerry actually said fight on and Jerry took exception to the microphone. So there we go. Underway here in Shawnee. Tech in the golden uniforms. 
And a turnover right off the bat, so Northwestern will get its first opportunity quickly. Yeah, a little bit of low, low pass there from Schaefer. Mitchell is kind of fumbling and bumbling along the baseline trying to keep that in play. You saw in the starters, by the way, timeout as the shot clock did not get underway. Clock did not get underway as well. They'll make that adjustment. Look, Northwestern will, uh, with the uh, exception of the young man directly in front of us, will have a height advantage, at least from the starters and starting lineup. However, you might think that translates to rebounding. It really doesn't for Northwestern. No, not at all. Northwestern, not a great rebounding team. They had to battle against the aggression of the Southwestern Oklahoma State Bulldogs on the boards yesterday, but they did a nice job stymieing that advantage enough as Cam McDowell knocks down the three from the right wing. Rangers on the board early. Again, attempting to echo what happened in our first game here to see a team with a share of the conference championship go down on semifinal Saturday. Northwestern trying to make it into that championship game. It's been a long time coming. Stepping back is Camarad, and he can't get it to fall, and Mitchell skying through for the board. It went through his hands, so the Rangers will go the other way quickly. Milton oh. doesn't get that one to fall, and Peter will come away with the board. We mentioned at the outset that uh, we didn't see that much of Peter yesterday, and I don't know if that's an accurate statement or not. He saw plenty of court time, but did not show up that much in the stats. As Schaefer's three from the left corner will be a little bit strong. Chase down and recovered as Milton keeps it in play. Free ahead. McDowell looking for White. And over to Milton in the corner. Schaefer steps in and a skip pass like that, a little dangerous anyway, but when it's about four feet off the court, definitely in a passing lane. Oh, nice job by Milton coming over on the health side and just ripping that away from Camerad. And Peter stepped in, takes it away from Milton. Ahead to Brooks, and we'll have a foul. This one will be on the court. First foul of our contest here, and it's charged to McDowell. Robbie Harmon looking for the call on the other end. That's a strong shoulder there from McDowell. Not really any effort to do anything besides put a shoulder into the body of Cassius Brooks. Schaefer to inbound. Yeah, you know, not necessarily a flagrant, but <laughs> certainly no, no play on the ball there. Making a statement early, it looks like. Brooks driving hard to the basket. Count it. He will shoot again. Wonderboy's trying to answer the three-point advantage that the Rangers got in one shot. Brooks trying to do it in two as he goes strong to the basket. Nice body control there, leaning in. Robbie Harmon not pleased with the positioning there of Shibangu saying, you know, Brooks isn't going to go left. Brooks went right. It's one of those things. Know your scouting report. That's right. You know, if you know your scouting report, you're not in position. That three-pointer partially blocked yeah. by Camerad. You got a hand on that. Free is going to shoot. Well, the, the word you used yesterday in volume and He'll make his share of those three-pointers as well. Not going to come up that short very often unless someone got a hand on it, which Camerad did. There's free. There's another shot, and that one goes in. Rangers with the long two up 5-3. Schaefer looking to go off the screen. Not much of one there, and so he'll decide to take it all the way in. Kicked back out. Brooks allows the defender to go by. Right elbow, no good. Mitchell, the GAC Defender of the Year, kicks back out. Brooks with a second opportunity, lines up and fires. Brooks with six points early, three-point plays in two different ways. Around the horn, McDowell looking at a 3-2 a defense. And McDowell falls away, and he will bring Brooks in, drawing the contact. Leaned in enough to draw Brooks in, took the shot. He'll go to the line to shoot two. 
Kevin McDowell at the line. Tough on there, Brooks just a little bit too crowding of McDowell on the jump shot. Northwestern got the win in Russellville back on January 18th, 63 to 54, but Tech repaid the loss with a win in Alva, 70 to 63, just a couple weeks ago. But heard Northwestern the post game on Friday saying they, they owed Tech one for that one. Exactly. Did not enjoy losing on their home court. You know, teams all, already looking ahead like that in the post game. You know, generally there's something there. Marquise Milton and Chance Love into the ball game for the Rangers. Milton, the hero on Friday, 17 points. Three of five from three point range off the bench for Northwestern. Meanwhile, for these Wonder Boys, I think they got a little bit more than what they thought they might get from Harding. Now, I say that knowing it's a rivalry game, knowing these two are going to give each other everything they have every time. But look, this was a Tech team that won by 33 against Harding, won by 23 against Harding, and it went down literally to the wire on Thursday. And the Wonder Boys getting just a two-point win. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of pride there for the Bisons. Coach Weston Jamison in his first season with the program, former Bison himself, singular, part of the Bisons. Harding picked to finish dead last in the conference, made the conference tournament and the seven seed at that. Yeah. Now granted, I will say seven, eight, nine, and 10, all at nine and 13, but still. Well, Joe, Joe, we got to the two weeks away from today and Everybody still had a chance to get in as Milton picks up where he left off yesterday with another three-pointer. Rangers lead this one 10-6. And he had a little kiss for the crowd, too. Northwestern fans on both sides of the court, some behind the Northwestern bench, some behind press row over here as well. And they were very vocal yesterday, looking to pick up where they left off as well. Interested to see how the athleticism of Northwestern plays a problem for Tech today. Got a little bit too strong for Chance Love. Tech obviously not a bunch of, you know, YMCA guys out here from an <laughs> athletic perspective, but definitely there's a difference for sure in favor of the Rangers. And Isaac Ragland also in the contest now for the Wonder Boys. More subs coming in as we go along. Long range three, rims out. Love, strong against Peter. That won't fall and gets his own board. Raglan picks up the foul there, so Love will go to the line to shoot two. And with that, we will see our first media timeout. Naturally, we're gonna see free throws after this. We'll take a break as Northwestern with a four point advantage. Hey, future Eddies. Are you interested in a career in business? Henderson State University offers bachelor's and master's degrees in business administration and certificates in analytics, marketing and communications, and nonprofit management. Visit hsu.edu slash degrees to see the full list of degree opportunities. We are here to help you be ready for what's next. Contact us at admissions at hsu.edu or visit hsu.edu slash readies to apply today or schedule a campus visit. Who do we look to, to shape our world? It'll be people who know how to think with their heads and their hearts. People who understand that faith is not the enemy of education, but its partner. More than book smart, more than business smart. They are wise in their whole being. We are future shapers. Learn to live well and lead well in God's world. Be a future shaper at OBU. Wonder Boys haven't scored in a little while. Got six quick points, but Northwestern has been putting it up and in since then. Samantha Roop 
on the sidelines for us here in the GAC tournament this year and had an opportunity to hear a little bit about what is going on for Arkansas Tech, Coach Mark Downey's team. Yeah, Joey, Coach Mark Downey, I don't know if you saw him, but he pulled out Tommy Kamarad. Whenever he was coming out, he was fired up. He was chewing him out, and that is because of the defensive play. At, at timeout just now, they said they need to see more aggressiveness on the rebounds and securing the ball. So we'll see if they can secure that whenever that happens. Thank you, Samantha. It's a valid point, too. No, I didn't see it from this perspective, but of course, Camarad has taken a seat now, and Arkansas Tech stops the scoring drought a bit with those, or excuse me, they still have their scoring drought. Northwestern with those free throws, they're gonna have to make, the, make up the difference too. Yeah, Northwestern, Coach Robbie Harmon saying he's a little, you know, pleasantly surprised at how well they've played defensively this year, just being connected and, you know, different guys and everything. And that's number two on Cam McDowell. And, you know, picked up that cheapy on the fast break with Brooks. And now with that reach in, he's on the bench with two personal fouls, an opportunity here for Tech. Three-pointer by Ragland, no good. Northwestern has Cheval Butters, sophomore forward from the Bahamas, checking in in place of McDowell. And Camarad is set to check back in for Arkansas Tech. So to Samantha's point, we'll see if he's able to make that defensive adjustment. Northwestern, another opportunity here, rolls all the way around and outside. Butters can't control it. And it's going uh, it to go to Should have been offensive right. interference. It looked like the ball was still on the rim. I think it was Butters who might have gone up trying to sort of dunk tap that back in with the rim. Ball was still clinging to the rim when he touched it. Butters open to inbound. Arkansas Tech willing to give up the three for Butters, not for anyone else. How about that one from Marquise Milton? That one won't go, but he was well outside the arc firing that one. Really want to see Taylor Peter get going. 5.7 boards yesterday. But if Tech is gonna, if Tech is gonna win this tournament, he has to get going. Camarad spin move has it stripped away, tries to get it back. Second opportunity can't get it back. And the pass ahead to Milton. Kennedy Milton's pass across to Free. Marquise Milton in the right corner. And Butters. Kennedy Milton had a really quiet 15 yesterday. Down. Part of that was he was nine of nine at the free throw line. So you look up at the end of the day, he's got 15, like how? <laughs> Peter from long range, and the rebound is long range as well. Schaefer tried to tip it, but Northwestern will control. Rangers on top, doubling up on Arkansas Tech. That margin is now eight, 14 to six. Schaefer ahead, and Brooks will slow it down a bit. And now assistant coach Nathan Kennedy ripping into camera a little bit. Not the best day for Tommy so far, but a nice layup there on the baseline cut. They'll be happy with that result. Camarad gets his first two of the afternoon. Man-to-man -man defense looking right here. Is Kennedy Milton tries to drive that left baseline, leaving it for Butters. And Butters all alone knows what to do with it, but he's that close to the basket. Great hustle there by Chance Love, forcing the turnover in the backcourt. All Rangers here through the first eight minutes of this one, as they lead this one 16 to eight. Swasser has been saying that the focus is you for 20 years. Now that I'm here, I know my voice matters. It's a true home away from home where the professors really do put the focus on me and my dreams. At Swasu, it feels like they are cheering me on with so many ways to get involved, like social clubs, sports, quality academics, and great people who care about your success. For real, the focus is on you. Open the door to your future at Swasu. Go, go!
Hey, future readies. Are you interested in careers that help your community? Henderson State University offers degrees in nursing, teaching, psychology, social work, and health and human performance. Visit hsu.edu slash degrees to see the full list of degree opportunities. We are here to help you be ready for what's next. Contact us at admissions at hsu.edu or visit hsu.edu slash readies to apply today or schedule a campus visit. Northwestern still doubling up on Arkansas Tech here, the regular season conference champion struggling here in semifinal Saturday to get the offense going. And, you know, Coach Downey and his staff frustrated at their defensive effort as well, but it, it might not uh, be as evident if they could get some points on the board. Yeah, it has not been a good shooting start for Arkansas Tech in this tournament, just 37% from the field on Thursday, shooting 30% from the field so far today. Six turnovers here in the first eight minutes of the ball game. Pass to the cutter through the lane. Northwestern's cutter is Justin Norris, and he misfires from mid-range. Tech now with an opportunity. Sean Cobb has checked into the contest for the Wonder Boys, as has Braden Tanner. Luke mentioned the minutes that he gave yesterday. Strong opportunity as the shot clock is winding down now. Camerad lets the defender go by. Shot no good. And the rebound corralled on the inside. Shabangu bringing that one down. Shabangu, game high 12 rebounds yesterday against Southwestern Oklahoma State. Had just a single point with his 12 rebounds. Obviously a big part of Northwestern's win. Strong to the basket. That's how you get more than a single point right there. The open look, Shabangu with a quick two. I don't, think, I don't think you talk about scouting. I don't think they saw that in the scouting report, his drive from the left elbow. No, definitely not. Camera right in the corner. A little short and another board free. Skying for that one. Brian Free, guy that Robbie Harmon just raved about in our conversation earlier this week. Called him the best human I've ever been around. That's high praise. That is. Free from way downtown. Free shot that from Tecumseh. And it went in. Timeout on the court. Coach Downey needs to talk about this with his team because they are in trouble early. 13-point advantage for Got Northwestern. We're going to keep it right here. To Braden Tanner heading into that timeout. And I mean, Joey, I, I'm obviously not a head coach, but holy smokes, I'm not sure what else Tanner could have done. Free just with a nice little crossover there and a step back. And Tanner was right in his lap pretty much the whole time. And it's amazing how little space that Free at five foot eight needs to get his shot away. Just so impressive. I was going to say, there aren't too many people on the court today that Tanner will have the height advantage over. Free is that person. No doubt about it. And He's still, there, wasn't, there wasn't anything that, that he could do. I, I agree. You shoot from that far back. I mean, I realize that the more that Steph Curry shoots from, well, I don't know, the ticket booth, just when he walks in the building, he's shooting from back there. The range has extended even down into the college level. See also Caitlin Clark. Absolutely. But, I see mean, there's my, only so much you could do. See my six-year-old twins at the YMCA. <laughs> like, shoot closer. You are only six. There's no threes at the YMCA. <laughs> Camera backs down. Great job on defense. White strips it away. And then in the position to take the foul. Camera frustration foul right there. And that was all hustle by Larry White. Look at that strip and then just a little push. That's just so, that's just not necessary from Camera. I mean, he barely, he barely touched White. I think White was diving for the ball anyway. But just, the, I mean, right in front of the official, you extend your arm, you make any sort of contact. I, I mean, that's going to be an easy call every time. It's not absolutely a frustration foul on Camerad. That's just the one. He also has three turnovers. 
just one for four from the field today, and he's watching this one from a very close range but on the bench. Cobb has checked back in. Now here's the problem for Tech. You got Camrad and Schaefer on the bench. You know, Tech, a good offensive team. They average 75 a game, but they're they're well balanced. And if Taylor Peters is going to be as hampered as he is right now, then you know he's obviously not a 20 point scorer, but a great scorer is Cassius Brooks. 12 points per game, 17 on Thursday in the quarterfinal win. He stepped up big then. He's going to have to step up big today as well. And for Tech fans, hopefully that was the start of a good offensive afternoon. Trey Allen also in the game for the Wonder Boys as Milton was stripped. And the Wonder Boys now in motion again. Off of Brooks' three-pointer. Decides to send it to the corner. Tanner's three-pointer is long, well long. And Cobb tried to save it, but he stepped on the line first. Peter checks out, Schaefer back in. It's been a solid season for Schaefer this year. He's, he's really, I think, made his presence known. And Luke, that's with a, a, a rotation that really doesn't go super deep. No, definitely. And even if it's deep on body, that's an offensive foul on Larry White. Trey Allen, nice job taking the charge. First on White. Watch here, you're going to see a whole lot of that arm bar here and then a little extension. Uh, maybe a little, a little, a little jogging backwards well. there from Allen as well. But, you know, well, but, again, but team again, no, you, team you no you charge see that, yeah, yeah, there you go. You see that arm, uh, as you mentioned earlier, you see that arm, a little bit of extension, even with the backing up, that's going to draw that twistle. That's a great look from Schaefer from the baseline. Wow, what a pass. Absolutely great pass. And six quick points for the Wonder Boys. They're back to within a touchdown now of Northwestern. Do you have the team no charge shirt at home or is that something we buy online? Need to look into that. Okay. I, I'm sure there is you know, some members of the college basketball media or proponents of that. So I'm sure there's a I'm sure there's a shirt to be had somewhere. It is the internet after all. <laughs> we'll look over that in the break so we find out in the meantime. It's 21-14. The Rangers up by the aforementioned touchdown. Back in a moment here on the GAC Sports Network. If you're not at home, where else would you be? Not the kind of home you're familiar with, but the kind that helps you become them or them. The kind where you become a part of a community that builds you up. A community that doesn't just give you the answers, but helps you discover them for yourself. Home is where the Mule Riders are. When you're a Mule Rider, you're not walking down a predetermined trail. You're blazing your own. The world is full of unsettled questions with so much to explore. Enter it with full reins of knowing who you are, where you come from, and what ignites your flame. Here at home, you have no limits. Reach for the stars and don't stop there. As a mule rider, you decide what's possible. Stop imagining what you could do and do it here. Think bigger. Think faster. Let's ride. Don't worry, you're not far from home. Because home is where the mule riders are. Six zero run courtesy of two long range shots for Arkansas Tech. Finding their way back into it. You know, that deficit a little bit earlier for the Wonder Boys, I, it, it was a struggle. You get down early like that and, and you find yourself floundering in the first 20 minutes of the game. Uh, you, you've already seen what happened to Southeastern as the top seed went down. You can't dig yourself that quick a hole. No, not at all. And, you know, Arkansas Tech, the, the offense just hadn't been there so far in the tournament. And, you know, kind of the op opposite case last year where Tech was able to, you know, kind of defend their way through. 
A lot of good, there's a lot of good offense that they're going to face here. And, you know, they faced a great offensive team in Harding. They're facing a really good offensive team here in Northwestern. And, you know, some, some of the tournament of your tournament success comes down to your matchups. And, you know, Tech, unfortunately, ran, has run into some decently difficult matchups from a defense to offense perspective. So they're not exactly able to just defend their way out of it while their offense kind of flounders along and flops around like a fish. <laughs> but uh, we'll see if they're able to really get things going. At, you know, and I know he's dealing with that wrist injury. You see the tape there on Talon Peters' right wrist. But he, he's got to get going. He's got to get going or, or I, don't, I don't see Tech being able to hoist a trophy tomorrow. Cameron makes the free throw. You see Coach Harmon looking on. Shabangu had picked up his second personal foul. Butters back in the contest, and Josh Mitchell back in the contest for Arkansas Tech. We really haven't talked about him that much, Luke, as he goes out to bring the first person driving, and he was drawn away from his defensive assignment, the dump off of the two points for Northwestern. That's how you get the defensive player of the year away. You have a 2-1-1 -on -one look. There was nobody else back to help. Yeah, Mitchell's been very quiet so far in this one. Affected the game a lot against Harding, mainly on the defensive end. But that guy, Cassius Brooks, wow. lightning quick Cassius spin Brooks. to the basket there for Cassius Brooks. Those moves were on display yesterday here in Fire Lake Arena. If you didn't get enough of them, he's got a few more to show today. Well, wow, that sensational start for him, 11 points, four or five shooting. Milton strong to the basket. Butters was there, but he's going to kick it out. White, the no-look pass to the outside, and freeze three is good. Outstanding ball movement. One of the best shots on the court for the Rangers is a Brian Free three-pointer. You know, Butters might have had a good, might have had an okay angle at the basket, but they swung it around and it ended up in a three-pointer for Brian Free, and that's, that's the best shot on the court right now for Northwestern. Amarad forced to take guard duties, kicks out to Brooks from the corner right in front of the Northwestern bench. Cassius Brooks, a one-man wrecking crew right now from inside and outside. Already 14 points for Cassius Brooks. Season high is 20, by the way, Joey. No, I would not be surprised at all to see him get that today. And it, and it would not be a forced issue. The way he's playing, they need to go to him. He's got the hot hand right now. Schaefer had a good look at the basket, one on three. And Milton says, I'm going to take this shot anyway. Got Camerad up in the air, and he will draw the foul. Man, it just blocked out of bounds by Camerad. Chancellor returns. Excuse me. Just blocked, forgive me. Replacing Larry White. Oh, no, that, it will be. No, okay. that went. Peter came straight down on his arm. And with no foul, I think. Quick inbound. That's, that's one of those tough ones there, Joey, because you look at the replay, it's like, well, you didn't call a foul. And also, it, Peter didn't actually touch it, so the ball hitting the underside of the stanchion should have been Tech basketball. But since you ruled that he did touch it, well, doesn't matter anyway. It's a turnover for Tech. Bodies on the floor. Meanwhile, on the other end of the court, the whistle gets blown as Cassius Brooks will make the short trip to the charity stripe after he drew the foul. He's a tough one to stop. We mentioned in the last game, you know, we were talking about Brennan Burns and, and Brooks. I want to add to that. Great work by the cameraman to hold his shot. We were talking about Burns in the last game, and of course, Southeastern fell in that one, and Coach Harmon Little nice, animated. Nice game of charades over there. I, I think he's getting his point across. I, I think, I don't think I'm supposed to move. I, I don't think I'm supposed to steal second just yet. I didn't see the take sign. So other than that, we talk about the quickness from these guards. Burns is very, very quick. I, I still say he's second to um, <laughs> Dworsky as we were talking about him in the previous game. Dworsky, the all-time leader assist in the GAC Conference. I don't know that anybody has that second gear that Dworsky did to get from one end of the court to the other, but Brooks is showing his speed today. Yeah, absolutely. He is. He's been a great pickup for Tech this year. 
Big close there by Camerad. Oh. Three for number four. That's ridiculous. And another timeout. You know, one of the, the keys to be a great three-point shooter is getting your body square. And look, even coming off the curl, Free squares his shoulders. Squaring his shoulders, getting a great angle at the basket, releasing it while you are square to the basket. That is the biggest key to be a great three-point shooter. You know, you can come flying off the corner of a screen and everything, but if you don't square your shoulders, you know, you're gonna it's gonna be tough to, to make a three-pointer. But Free does an outstanding job for, for how fast he is coming off a curl, squaring up as he releases the shot. That's why he shoots 45% in his 11th in the nation exactly. in that percentage. There's some, there's some GAC representation in the upper echelons of Division II. Absolutely. It, you know, there's always going to be – GAC is a good basketball conference, and it, it has been the pedigree of some of the old guard, if you will, when the conference was formed, Arkansas Tech, Harding. You know, Southeastern obviously has, you know, a little bit of history of some dude named Dennis Rodman, you know, <laughs> who, you know, who ever heard of him. But, uh, you know, just – there's some good basketball here, and there's been good basketball for a while. And, you know, the men's league may be down, but, you know, it's competitive. And that, you know, as a fan, as a viewer of basketball, you know, you might not see the most mistake-free basketball this year out of the men's side, but you've seen a lot of really close games. I mean, exactly. pretty much every coach we talked about mentioned, you know, we've been in X number of games that were decided in the last two minutes or X number of games that were 10 or less. And all of them said it. It's like, and they're all right. It's been a lot of close games this year. Tech trailing by three now after that big three-pointer from Brian Three. Excuse me. Trailing by six after the three-pointer. There's a look inside. There's Josh Mitchell. And there's Mitchell. His first shot of the game results in his first basket. Milton slows it down, looking top of the key. Free now draws a double team outside the arc. And then, did he throw it away or was it touched by one of the Wonder Boys? The official out, the official out top says it was tipped. Did, but you notice that too, after what Free has done on the outside of the arc, there were two Wonder Boys in assignment 20 feet from the basket guarding Free. Big day for free. That was 11 points already. Well outside the arc, but this time Milton is the one who fires. And the Wonder Boys can't get a handle on the rebound. I say it was last touched by Northwestern. And Camerod here or there nearly threw it into the bench. He will inbound in front of that bench. Coach Downey, some instruction for the team. Mark Downey, the Great American Conference Coach of the Year in 2023-2024. Yeah, his second, second honor on his second stint at Tech. You know, he, he had spent some time in Oklahoma to get much of Northeastern State after his first stint in Russellville. It's a great follow there by Camrad. Should have had Josh Mitchell on the free throw line. Milton bringing those arms down. Should have been, should have been a foul call there. Milton trying to find help with the screen, can't do it, so he dishes it off. Free on the left side. Nowhere to go. Again, there's a double team well outside the arc. How big a player is free after all? And forget the 5'8 frame. He's drawing attention. This will go out. It's going to stay with Northwestern. Both players jostling for that one. They're saying Cassius Brooks stepped on the baseline when they were both touching the basketball. Ooh, <laughs> Jamal Butters <laughs> was not ready for that. And Keith Milton wanted to go fast. Like Ricky Bobby. Hey, if you're not first, you are last. Mitchell with the block. 
Defensive Player of the Year. Sets up the transition, and how about Brooks? Putting the foot on the gas. We're tied, Joey. 29 apiece. Tech coming all the way back, using their defense to do it. Seven turnovers for the Rangers. Well, it, it was a big hole early, and they have dug their way right out of it. Milton stops, has nowhere to go. Shot clock at three. Three, up, over, will not fall. Wonder Boys with a chance to take a lead late here in the first quarter, or first half. I was hoping Free would take it right in front of us. <laughs> That's what all the Tech fans were thinking he was about to do. He has the range. Camerad, that one not That was close. either blocked or he got hit on the hand, it looked like, by Love. Milton stops his floater, won't go either. You know, when you think about it, Joey, and I believe there's some better basketball minds than me to back me up on this. The floater, not the most efficient shot. I mean, it's a good idea to get it over a taller defender. Is Milton, Milton takes that Euro step. No shot there. Not the floater that time, but not a good look in the middle either. I, I, I would agree with you that as we're in the final minute here in the first half. Uh, it, it's great aesthetically. It looks pretty. And, and if you are going to go over some really, really tall frames in the lane occasionally, but uh, ideally probably not the best shot. Because some of the physics of why uh, shot is good or not is the spin on the ball and so when you're shooting a floater and taking that out of it it's not that it's going to knuckle like a knuckleball in baseball but there's more likely that scenario that's going to happen and if it's going in flat with no spin coach harman's a different trajectory no it, it really is coach harman's team has given up a big lead and he's he's frustrated watching this can't get to the half soon enough I was about to ask if you're not on Team Knuckleball fan. It sounds like that is definitely the case. Oh, I like the Knuckleball. Okay. Enjoy the cheer, cheer for the Red Sox. Tim Wakefield, mm -hmm. the late Tim Wakefield. It's hard to believe, unfortunately, passing away earlier or last year. And, but well, he was one of my favorites. That Knuckleball, man, when that thing was cooking, unbelievable. Rangers haven't Short, scored in yeah. four minutes. Short gap between the shot clock and the game clock here. Rangers need some points as they trail. Milton trying to find a screen, running out of time. Free stops. He's guarded by Schaefer, who got a hand on it, and the official says he got a hand on Free. That will be three free throws. I, that's the right call. Schaefer got him on the arm. There was still some time left on the clock, too, so they're going to need to yeah. review this and check. But that the clock wound that the down. Right, that was the right call. He he definitely got him on the arm. We'll see what gets put back on. Free will go to the line to shoot three, and that's really big. His first free throw opportunities today, he's three from four outside the arc, four of six overall, has three boards to go with this today. They put two and a half seconds on the clock. I'd, I'd say that's accurate. Yep. Because it was a it was slightly less than a two second gap between the shot clock and the game clock. And he got the shot off just before the clock expired or the shot clock expired. And it's big as well because free 89% at the foul line. Free tied for the lead on his team for rebounds in the first half as well. Norris checks back in as Butters will take a seat. Defensive presence right now as Free has made the first two free throws and his team has taken a one-point lead. That one comes up short. Camerad from 60. God, nearly traveled once he got the ball. That's what the Northwestern staff said as well. Meanwhile, three free throws 
Two of them go in, and the Rangers are back on top as we go to the intermission. We'll take a break here at halftime. The number three seed with a slim advantage over the number two seed in this GAC semifinal. Running outdoors, you got to take what nature gives you. We'd like to say we run when they don't. So we want to give you products to be able to run when you don't think you should run, when it's pouring rain outside, it's snowing. We're going to have products for you to get out there. You don't get better sitting on your butt not training. You got to get out there and run. At Under Armour, it's always about premium textiles. They need to perform, they need to be the best. The merging of hybrid textiles with naturals and new seaming and bonding and super sleek, modern, fast, futuristic designs, that's where we are really going to turn it up a notch. If you look good and you feel good, you're going to perform better. Everyone tells you to think about the future, but we know there's growth in the journey. At ATU, we value this moment because here, nature becomes your classroom. So breathe it in. You've got this. Right here, right where you are. Focus on the now because our focus is on your success. Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what does character, culture, and Christ mean today? These days, I like to talk about refining character. I think that we're all in process. and. In those collegiate years, those years of the university experience, there's a great opportunity to refine character. talent and dedication to succeed in school and in sports will provide the opportunity. Everyone tells you to think about the future, but strength, knowledge, and wisdom are what you build along the way. There's power in the process. We value this moment because at ATU, you write your own script to what comes next. So here's your cue. Right here, right where you are. Focus on the now, because our focus is on your success. Before the house, before the office, the late nights and new bosses. Before the last hugs, the wins and the losses. Before building the team, before building yourself, the rise and grinds, all day, every day. Before the letter, before the dream, there was a kid who loved to play. If you have the talent and dedication to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity. Hey, what you doing this for? Just out here, 
for recreational purposes. Yeah. Work here, man. The mission today is to work hard until you can't go no more. It's always a team mission. Can't get nowhere without the team. It takes everybody. One, two, three. Man, you better be open. Oh, you better be open. Oh. Man, listen, man, listen. It's only one attitude that you gotta bring. Let's go. That you need to bring. Work, 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 work. I mean, we come down here every day to get better. It feels easy. I buy a door, man. We work out on the street. You feel me? We the best in the nation. We outwork y'all. We outwork anybody. Every time I come through these lines, no matter what these lines at, work. Maximum effort. Come on, Let's go. How to spot a bull weevil? Bull weevils are a fascinating species. They're known to travel in packs, are highly intelligent, and can thrive in any environment. Each and every bull weevil is unique, and they have unique opportunities. But they all share one common trait. Every bull weevil has a bright future awaiting wherever they go. And that's how you spot a bull weevil. Learn more at uamont.edu. We see you. Your incredible potential and willpower set you apart. You're first to take that leap of faith. First to get to work. First to solve the problem. No burden should be carried alone. We'll be there. Every step, day, challenge. First is your destiny. We get it because first is who we are. At East Central University, we educate and empower students to transform the world. We provide an exceptional hands-on learning experience with professors who really go that extra mile. East Central University encourages students to become who they are meant to be while making lasting memories. East Central University, welcome home. education pushes you to diligence and excellence in all that you do. We're establishing this foundation where the students can, can then go and do the things that they want to do. Everything we do, everything we touch, everything that we try to teach our students revolves around Christ. It's about cultivating passion and a, a desire to do something significant with your life. You find a vision for your life, and I think that's where students really lean into their inspired purpose. Hey future Eddies, are you interested in a career in business? Henderson State University offers bachelor's and master's degrees in business administration and certificates in analytics, marketing and communications, and nonprofit management. Visit hsu.edu slash degrees to see the full list of degree opportunities. We are here to help you be ready for what's next. Contact us at admissions at hsu.edu or visit hsu.edu slash ready to apply today or schedule a campus visit. Who do we look to to shape our world? It'll be people who know how to think with their heads and their hearts. People who understand that faith is not the enemy of education, but its partner. More than book smart, more than business smart. They are wise in their whole being. We are future shapers. Learn to live well and lead well in God's world. Be a future shaper at OBU. Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what is character, culture, and Christ? 
last but certainly not least, in fact, I would put it uh, first, and that is serving Christ. I like the fact that it's last because it does undergird everything that we do. Um, our responsibility, I believe more than anything else, is to serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Swatsu has been saying that the focus is you for 20 years. Now that I'm here, I know my voice matters. It's a true home away from home where the professors really do put the focus on me and my dreams. At Swatsu, it feels like they are cheering me on with so many ways to get involved, like social clubs, sports, quality academics, great people who care about your success. For real, the focus is on you. Open the door to your future at Swatsu. Go, go! Swatsu, the focus is you. Hey, Future Readies. Are you interested in careers that help your community? Henderson State University offers degrees in nursing, teaching, psychology, social work, and health and human performance. Visit hsu.edu slash degrees to see the full list of degree opportunities. We are here to help you be ready for what's next. Contact us at admissions at hsu.edu or visit hsu.edu slash readies to apply today or schedule a campus visit. If you're not at home, where else would you be? Not the kind of home you're familiar with, but the kind that helps you become them. Or them. The kind where you become a part of a community that builds you up. A community that doesn't just give you the answers, but helps you discover them for yourself. Home is where the Mule Riders are. When you're a Mule Rider, you're not walking down a predetermined trail. You're blazing your own. The world is full of unsettled questions with so much to explore. Enter it with full reins of knowing who you are, where you come from, and what ignites your flame. Here at home, you have no limits. Reach for the stars and don't stop there. As a mule rider, you decide what's possible. Stop imagining what you could do and do it here. Think bigger. Think faster. Let's ride. Don't worry, you're not far from home. Because home is where the mule riders are. Everyone tells you to think about the future, but there's power in the process. We value this moment because at ATU, every moment brings you one step closer to what comes next. You've got this right here, right where you are. Focus on the now because our focus is on your success. Northwestern back on top by one. It was an extended lead at one point in time. The Wonder Boys came back, but a couple of free throws from free near the end gave the three seed a small advantage. And I've heard it said, Luke, if it was any closer, it'd be tied. And that is the case right now. Northwestern and Coach Harmon was a bit animated near the end of the first half, a little frustrated with how things were going down. Samantha, you got to watch Coach Harmon as the intermission was uh, – going in. Talk a little bit about what you saw. Yeah, Harmon was walking out and he seemed very upset about something. He was kind of yelling at back and forth with the refs and yeah, Mark Downey did get involved too, so I'm not really sure what it was about. He was upset about something. I think it had to do um, something about the refs calls um, during that um, first half, but I will say that their defensive pressure has been really great. They caused um, 13 defensive turnovers and so Let's hope they can bring it around and uh, keep up the good work. And for Northwestern, that's exactly right. They did get to, to uh, they, they saw the defense that they wanted at times, again, forcing Tech to 13 turnovers. And something else we saw, Luke, were from Northwestern, the points in the paint were big too. Yeah, absolutely. Northwestern, you know, eight points in the paint. It, you know, they shot just 37% from the field, but Tech 44% from the field in the first half. But Tech at one point was at 30% from the field. I believe it was at three of 10. So seven to 13 over the latter half of the first half for Arkansas Tech to get back in this. They had a brief lead. 
Northwestern led by as many as 13 in that first half. So for Tech to only be down one, given how that first half began, is an accomplishment for the Wonder Boys. And you know, you look at the foul situation. Wonder Boys not in any sort of foul trouble whatsoever. Both Shibangu and McDowell with two points. And not to be overstated, Cam McDowell only played five minutes in that first half because of those two personal fouls. So he'll be back on the court and we'll see how the Rangers offense looks as they go into the second half with a full complement of players. And Luke, talk about that Ar Arkansas Tech offense just a bit because Brooks just lit it up and he uh, was just almost almost flawless. Yeah, 18 points in the first half for Cassius Brooks. Three three-pointers, six to seven from the field. Two off his season high. So Schaefer trying to step in, stay with Free to guard the inbound. He's saying that uh, the Contact came from the team in black jerseys. The official did not agree. So Schaefer gets a quick foul before even a tick off the clock in the second half. And Northwestern with the ball to open. And Schaefer can't get around McDowell down low. McDowell that close gets his first two here in the second half. You just mentioned him. Probably going to see more from him offensively in the second half. And he took to your advice early. Yeah, great seal there. And Schaefer, that's a really great entry pass from Shibangu as well. That's a tough angle. And he put it out of the reach of Schaefer where only McDowell could get it. McDowell able to get pay it off. White with a huge steal. The tip down the court. White has to wait for it. And he was fouled as he went up. How about that? White with the block. And it was just a little volleyball tap to get the ball up the court to him. If it's a little bit farther ahead, leads him a little bit. You mentioned the term rim rocker when Larry White's involved. I think we'd have seen another one of those. Yeah, great play by Taylor Peter getting back and knocking that away from Larry White to prevent the easy bucket. No foul. That time, however, Schaefer picks up the foul, and that's two on him here just in the second half alone. Yeah, third foul on Cade Schaefer, and that's why this silly foul right in front of us is so costly, because now he's got three. He's got to come out of the ball game. Tanner checking in in his place. And that's exactly what Mark Downey is telling him right now. He's pointing toward us. He's not mad at us, Joey, I promise. <laughs> he's pointing at that play over there. That's why that was a bad decision. Self. You know, not even go as far as call it selfish play, but just not a wise play on Cade Schaefer's part. Because now he has to come out of the game 54 seconds into the second half. I'll tell you what, though, when Mark Downey looks over and, it's, and we are directly in his line of sight when that happens and he's got that, uh, that demeanor, it does catch my attention. Spangu goes 0 for 2, but yeah, Mark Downey and Robbie Harmon, they are uh, not going to be described in the quiet quadrant of the GAC men's coaches. We just had that matchup with Kelly Green and B.J. Foster, much more docile on the sidelines between those two, but Downey and Harmon not going to be confused for quiet on the sidelines. <laughs> and I, I, I would say this. That was an isolated incident for Coach Green. We, we've seen him a little more vocal in times past. Not so much today. And unfortunately for him, uh, his team came up short today as Southern Nazarene has advanced to take on the winner of this game. So 18-23 remaining. And White tries to rock the rim there. He can't do it. And a long rebound will go to Arkansas Tech. So the Rangers keep the one-point advantage. Wonder Boys now to move the ball around. It's a really great pass from Milton to White coming right down Main Street in the paint. Camera at guard by Milton, a little bit of a mismatch, but maybe not so far outside away from the rim. Brooks pull up at the buzzer or the shot clock buzzer. It will not fall and Brooks, that's a good look for him, but the fall away jumper, that was more of a pressure shot than just squaring away. 11 field goals apiece for these teams. Looks like a number of GAC men's basketball conference records this year, 11 and 11. Yeah. Have that a number of times and a whole lot of nine and 13. Not sure if we could see it on the broadcast there, but Mark, Robbie Harmon stepped up toward the coaches boxes. Downey was talking to the officials going back down the court and then they had another little, little exchanging of words there over in front of the scorers table. First. Two competitors 
up there. Rangers ball out of bounds. You know, Luke, one thing too about the GAC men's this year, men's side this year is freeze, three pointers a little strong, rebound taken by Mitchell. We talked about the parity in the conference and how many teams are 11 and 11, how many teams are 9 and 3, as Mitchell has two opportunities, can't get it to fall there. Man, that's a bummer, too. That's a great pass by Cassius Brooks. White. When he goes to the basket, he goes strong to the basket, and there's really no stopping him. Rangers back up by three, but the parity in the league, it really went deep. At so much the point that there are not one but two conference champions in Arkansas Tech and Southeastern Oklahoma, but the lowest team in the league, Washita, has a six and 16 record. That was the that was the cellar dweller right there. I mean, there were no Owen teams. There were no one win teams in the conference. There was just so much competitive play. Yeah, and early in the season, you know, I remember Southeastern play-by-play -play man Jay Lindley, we were talking about that very fact back in January when they came to, when we met up in Bethany. He, you know, the cellar dweller at the time as Camerad scores off the glass, had four losses. I think it was still wa four wins, I should say. It was still Washita, but that, the six wins ties the highest mark for the lowest yeah, for, for the 12th position dweller, yeah. in the GAC history. But at that point, it looked like it was going to be a lot more than six. And Shabango. Up and in. Yeah. Shabango. Putting it on everyone's wow. head out there. Uh, th there, there is a statement to be made then, and I think it's legitimate even with the, the play of the conference and maybe not getting as much national recognition because of that parity. I think there's a statement to be made that uh, Washita could be the best number 12 team in the country. Brooks driving in. Oh, good luck. off to Camerad, nowhere to go. And they're gonna say tie ball. Possession arrow favoring Tech. That's a great look to Camerad and a great play by Shibangu right here. Fantastic, after a dunk, the tie ball, it's gonna give Tech another 30 seconds on the shot clock, but a great defensive stand by the Rangers. Three point advantage for the team in black and red. Swasser has been saying that the focus is you for 20 years. Now that I'm here, I know my voice matters. It's a true home away from home where the professors really do put the focus on me and my dreams. At Swasu, it feels like they are cheering me on with so many ways to get involved, like social clubs, sports, quality academics, and great people who care about your success. For real, the focus is on you. Open the door to your future at Swasu. Go, go! Swasu, the focus is you. Hey, Future Readies. Are you interested in careers that help your community? Henderson State University offers degrees in nursing, teaching, psychology, social work, and health and human performance. Visit hsu.edu slash degrees to see the full list of degree opportunities. We are here to help you be ready for what's next. Contact us at admissions at hsu.edu or visit hsu.edu slash readies to apply today or schedule a campus visit. Well, when you win, actually even when you lose, they take care of you afterward. Although that pizza tastes a lot better, I'm sure, Jay coming Ashton, off a W. Don't you think, Luke? Victory pizza is what they yes. call that at Pizza Hut. So the Nazarene coming off a W. Oh. Tipped in, did it count? They're gonna look at it. I think they're going to look at it. The official initially giving the signal. Mark Downey thought they were saying it was no good, yeah. and so they're going to take a look at this a one. Quick apology from Mark Downey toward toward our official over there on the far side. This is a great inbound play. Well, and Braden Tanner puts up the shot. This is just a heady play by Cassius Brooks. As Tanner's the one who shoots it, it's blocked, and Brooks just kind of. So there's the shot by Tanner. It's deflected. Brooks goes up. Ooh, that's oh, close. I don't know. Now, the, light, the light and the zero are not in sync 100%. That's really, that, really close. Yes. Thought he had it in real time. Looking at it now. So is the it clock still is at hand? zero. It I think it's still touching tell, a fingertip. They say it counts. Wow. 
think that's the right call. Too close to call. Well, it, you know, it's like we hear in the NFL, whether the call is confirmed or the call stands. And I right. think in this case, between the two, the official ruling would be the call stands as it is on the court. Officiating crew doing a great job here today in Shawnee as the officials have throughout the weekend here. Honest, honestly, and I mean, and granted, these are the best of the season. You know, you, if you don't have a good regular season, you're not repping the conference tournament. But the officiating's been really good. Yes. Through the first two and a half days now. Love making his way inside and he'll take a short trip to the free throw line after that. Drawing the contact and his team up by a point. Free throws, I believe, are going to come into play in this one. Not a whole lot of fouls in the early going for the teams combined, but Arkansas Tech has four of the five. The Northwestern, a 73% shooting team from the free throw line, so don't want to leave them at the line for too many good opportunities. Allow them to build a, build a big lead. Yeah, this Northwestern team, they're sitting at Christmas, home at Christmas break, three and seven. And since that point, you know, they've gone 14 and five. That first practice back from Christmas break is. Camarades three. With the travel. Yeah, after the fact, after Brooks took too many. Coach Foster walking behind us. I, don't know if, I, I didn't see that they'd given him any pizza. Sure, he's, he's just taking notes right now, getting ready for tomorrow's game. Losing He'll control when he's there. A trophy in his hand. His love, and so Tech down the court to the corner to Brooks for three. Too strong. It's good Tough ball movement. Down. Good ball movement there by Tech. Both teams have been able to go to the bench somewhat. Seen a little bit more of spreading the wealth though from Northwestern. Arkansas Tech has seen a couple of players come in long enough for a cup of coffee and back out the back to the bench. But they may need them a little bit later on. Contact on the wow. rebound. There's a lot of contact on that whole play there. On the take, and you see Cobb well, get up Cam there first. Dowell, that's his third foul. That's three on Cam McDowell. Schaefer back in, also with three personal fouls for Arkansas Tech. So both three and three for both teams have three fouls. Schaefer on the offensive end, he's been able to distribute the ball, has three assists to go with a couple of rebounds. 0 for 2, though, from the field. McDowell's offense a little bit stronger, still not I'm sure what he wants. He's two for four from the field. One of those shots outside the arc, a couple of free throws, and McDowell has seven on the day. The two players with three fouls, key players here. Brooks, clutch, clutch, shot off the glass. It's a little bit too short. And he did a great job keeping that foot down, able to pivot, pivot, pivot. Finally got a clean look, just left it short. And again, love for three. Count that one as it rattles in. Well, and another thing for Tech, they got back in this one down at halftime. They led briefly at the end of the first half before those Brian Free free throws. But right now, Taylor Peters scoreless on two field goal attempts. Cade Schaefer scoreless on two field goal attempts. They need something from those guys. Absolutely. Is Three has three of the six three-pointers made. Three other players with one apiece for Northwestern. Looked like there was a fingertip on that one. The shot from Peter, no good. And the rebound, short and off the rim. And Brooks is going to be charged with a foul as McDowell tries to work around him. Fouls on Cassius Brooks. That's his second first Hard fall there for Cam McDowell. Number five. Number Alan Brooks is first. See, so yeah, just... Josh Mitchell returned. Their feet got tangled up. No, didn't look like much yeah, up high. Maybe even got a piece of the ball. But, you know, if it's your feet that caused the trip, it's a foul on you, as unfortunate as that is. 
got to call something. Let's talk about Taylor Peter just a little bit more right now. Still in the game after that shot came up short again. Fingertip on that shot. So Peter now 0 for 3 from the field, 0 for 2 from outside the arc. He hasn't scored, has two boards, no assists either. So really hasn't factored into the scoring at all. There's his third rebound of the day. Luke felt like the Arkansas Tech might need Peter, and Peter said on Thursday that he'd be ready for Saturday. Yeah, and just wonder how much of that is, is just the game plan and how much of that is Peter's injury. Tanner gets down, triple team down low, tries to get it in the hands of a teammate, and right in front of the bench, Brooks makes the catch, but he steps out. Yeah, Tanner, Tanner trying to be aggressive, trying to make something happen, going to the baseline, but got caught in no man's land. Nowhere to go once he got down to that baseline in the paint. One of those, that's one of those tough plays. We talked about the extra defender there. If you're driving, drive all the way through. If you stop, the baseline itself becomes another defender for the other team. They can possibly get a defensive, trying to get something out of that. Instead, Milton oh, looks like outside. Milton, Milton went skidding down the lane, but Chance Love got busted for the travel. And like, take your take your pick there. <laughs> exactly. Milton <laughs> slid nearly from this second line all the way down to the big block. Just started his move a little bit too quickly. Mitchell looking for someone down low. Brooks and Camerod were both there. He thought better of it, so they'll reset up at the top. Well, let's see, Peter's such an unselfish player. He's not going to be a guy who's like, just give me the ball and get out of the way. I need to get some here. He's not going to do that. Gets the defender up. There's oh, that bounce pass, pass just like great you were talking about. There by love. So that's a great pass there from Peter. Well, the, the word that came to mind just as you were talking and, and about Peter was facilitator, and, and we've seen him to be that in his time at Arkansas Tech. You're right, and it takes an unselfish player to do that. It's now 12 turnovers for Tech. But Tech has 13 points off nine Northwestern turnovers, just six points off turnovers for Northwestern. Shot clock violation. The Another Tech good defensive stands. possession for Tech. They're hanging in there because of their defense, but they got to get something going offensively. Cobb and Schaefer will come in when we come back. Take the time out here at Fire Lake Arena. Hey, Future Readies. Are you interested in careers that help your community? Henderson State University offers degrees in nursing, teaching, psychology, social work, and health and human performance. Visit hsu.edu slash degrees to see the full list of degree opportunities. We are here to help you be ready for what's next. Contact us at admissions at hsu.edu or visit hsu.edu slash readies to apply today or schedule a campus visit. If you're not at home, where else would you be? Not the kind of home you're familiar with. One of the fastest growing universities in the state and the region, Southeastern Oklahoma State University has classes for bachelor's, master's, and certificate programs. Over 45 degree programs are available with in-person, online, and hybrid options. With a legacy of excellence dating back to 1909, our dedicated faculty and staff are here to make your legacy a great one. Your future starts here at Texoma's University. Arkansas Tech hasn't scored in quite a while, but as you mentioned, Luke, four and a half minutes, you have to have points. It doesn't matter. I mean, the defensive stands are there, but you have to be able to complement your defense with some offense as well. That's Cameron a good look from, from three. Cameron. It really was. Maybe rushed it just a little bit. He had a he had a minute to collect himself there. Defense, 
And we have, there is what you were talking about a little bit earlier from Shebanga. Rim violation. Can't touch the ball while it's still rolling around there in contact with that metal. And a little bit of frustration from both these officials while ago, but Samantha, you had an opportunity to see that and they weren't talking to one another, were they? Yeah, I think they were just disappointed on some of the referee's calls. I think I don't think they were necessarily mad at each other, but I did have a chance to stand behind um, Northwestern or yeah Northwestern bench, and Coach Hartman is very aware that their defense is doing very well again with the defensive turnovers. Um, that they just want to keep up the defense, but on offense they've been struggling to like keep this lead, and so they said they just need to keep on moving so we can see if they'll get a few baskets in this round. And they do. Thank you, Samantha. They have moved the ball around. Fortuitous long and high rebound, and Love is able to take it in. And as Samantha mentioned, you just have to, to move without the ball. They reset here. Five seconds left. Milton trying the alley-oop there, looking inside for Shibangu, and Peter takes it the other way. Shibangu wanted to throw it down. Peter said, I've got this. Had to take That's it coast to, to coast first to do points. it. Exactly. Northwestern trying to do something it has not done before, and that is make it into this championship. Playing on championship Sunday has eluded Northwestern. And to that point, and let's talk about this, Luke, really quickly, is Northwestern has the four-point advantage. 11 of the other men's teams in the Great American Conference have at least seen time on Championship Sunday. Now, they've not all won, but they've been there, the only team being Northwestern. But Northwestern came to the conference a little bit later than some of the others. The number 11 team to come to the Great American Conference, GAC its inception in 2011, nine teams originally there, six from Arkansas, three from Oklahoma. Southern Nazarene came in about five years later as the number 10 team, Northwestern followed that the next year in Oklahoma Baptist, two years later, I believe. Northwestern though, the only men's basketball team to not have played in the championship, and Coach Harmon, trying to uh, get his Rangers to get that particular asterisk away from his team's name. Well, and that make, if it makes sense, Northwestern kind of going through a bit of a dry spell when they came into the league, a little bit down as a program, but Vinay Patel oh, built it back up over the last few years and then went down to Angelo State, and now Robbie Harmon keeping Northwestern at a strong level here over the last two years. So just a, you know, it's a, it's a building process. Now, Coach Patel, good guy. Really enjoy visiting with him. And, and I would say that for all these men's basketball coaches and women's here, fantastic people to get to visit with. Spinning jumper off the glass. Kennedy Milton made that one look pretty. But it really is. I mean, they, these are great coaches here in the GAC. And uh, I would say 24 of 24, great people to visit with and uh, just leading their programs well. Camerad can't get that one to go. Put back by Cobb a little too strong. And that is a, the epitome of a frustration foul as we take this one into the next break. Camerad's going to pick up a foul. He doesn't want to pick up. Probably doesn't want to talk to the coaching staff as he makes his way to the bench after that. Tech trailing by six. And there we see, nope. Couldn't get the rebound, couldn't get the shot. I don't want to get the foul, but unfortunately, there it is. Back in a moment. If you're not at home, where else would you be? Not the kind of home you're familiar with, but the kind that helps you become them, or them. The kind where you become a part of a community that builds you up. A community that doesn't just give you the answers, but helps you discover them for yourself. Home is where the Mule Riders are. When you're a Mule Rider, you're not walking down a predetermined trail, you're blazing your own. The world is full of unsettled questions with so much to explore. Enter it with full reins of knowing who you are, where you come from, and what ignites your flame. Here at home, you have no limits. Reach for the stars and don't stop there. As a mule rider, you decide what's possible. Stop imagining what you could do and do it here. Think bigger. Think faster. Let's ride. Don't worry, you're not far from home. Because home 
is where the mule riders are. Six point game here. The Fire Lake Arena in Shawnee. South portion of the city of Shawnee, almost. I, I don't know that it's it's still technically in Shawnee, I believe, real close to the Tecumseh line. Tecumseh, where my mother graduated high school a number of years ago. So familiar with the area. It's just a nice place. I, I really enjoy the facilities here, too, Luke. I, this is the third year of having the basketball tournament here, Great American Conference tournament here, and we really enjoy getting to be a part here Great facilities, nice uh, uh, central location within the Sooner State for sure. Conference championships making their way back and forth between Oklahoma and Arkansas in different sports. Next time we'll be broadcasting will be from Bentonville, Arkansas for softball in May. And then Little Rock for baseball after that. Here in Shawnee today, good game going on in game number two, 44-38. And Tech. And Schaefer working that shot clock, looking for Mitchell inside, and then it's going to draw the ire of the official, the double team, and it looks like free to pick that one up, his first personal. Yeah, Kate, a lot of dribbling there for Kate Schaefer. Not a lot of movement for the Wonder Boys. Just, just can't get anything going offensively. They're shooting 24% in the second half. Shot clock back to 20 now after the foul. Quick inbound, quick shot, and a quick rebound after Camerad throws up the air ball in case you couldn't hear the Rangers fans behind us. Uh, it has been a struggle. And Camerad and Brooks have 30 of the 38 points. And Brooks hasn't scored in a while either. Three in the lane, dumps that one off down low. Spin, jumper, a little bit too strong. Rangers fans aren't as quick to point out the air ball on the other end of the court. Shibangu puts that one up, and that's fun. That's the partisan crowd. That's what you're here for. Baseline cut, and Brooks will go to the free throw line to shoot two. Now blocking blocking foul there on Marquise Milton. Good dish on the baseline. And good call. Milton trying to just slide underneath there. Two shots here for Cassius Brooks, who's matched a season high with 20 points today. Adds to that right there. Well, Luke, not, not a fan, and he's he's no team charge. Along with Cameron McDowell. That's right. Or the Rangers, team no charge. How, how, what's the exact wording for the shirts? Probably team no team charge. no charge, okay. Hashtag team no okay, charge. There we go. Speaking of social media, how about the Great American Conference and social media? Oh, just Check them out on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Destiny's doing a great job here from Shawnee, keeping everyone apprised of what's happening in the men's and women's basketball tournaments. Pass ahead, left behind. Oh, the oh my goodness. Peter has two baskets in this contest, and they are both memorable. That was some macaroni salad out of macaroni something else there. Wow. Jerry. High pass and a flush for Taylor Peter. Larry White going strong to the basket will draw the foul underneath, and White will get to shoot two. Wonder Boys back to within two. And a great leave for Taylor and Peter coming through. That's a team, teammates knowing one another and where they're gonna be at any time. Don't think we had Taylor and Peter's only two buckets of the game coming on dunks, but here we are. <laughs> you know, he had five points on Thursday in the win. It's one of five from the field, four points today, two of six. And I mean, frankly, Joey, even when he's had the ball, it, I mean, it's not like he's had a ton of opportunities to take good looks at the basket. I mean, even, you know, maybe slightly injured, Northwestern has been very attentive to him. And when you average 20 a game, of course, that's going to happen. Second free throw falls after the first does not. White adds one to the lead. It's a three-point advantage now. Less than six and a half remaining here in semifinal number two. Very Southern different Nazarene. game. Yeah, no, the first awaits the winner. And you're right, this is a totally different game. 
Although I, I would say, Luke, that Southern Nazarene did its part to make the game more like this than what Southeastern would have wanted it to be. Yeah, they, they definitely took their time and, you know, free throws at the end. Helped oh, SNU oh, get up to the 86 point mark, but nice dish from Mitchell over to Camerad, cutting in. It's a good dive to the basket by Camerad, getting to the line for some easy looks. Tech just 26% from the field in the second half. Northwestern not much better, 31% from the field. Both teams under 40% for the game. It has, I mean, it's been a defensive game. Some of that has been just missing good looks, but some of that has been just really good defense. Two points, big for Arkansas Tech. We've talked, to, well, I guess, I think we have to use the egg timer and see how long has it been since the last time we've talked about Arkansas Tech's defense. We'll take a time out and figure that out because when we come back, we'll talk about Arkansas Tech's defense in a moment. Everyone tells you to think about the future, but there's power in the process. We value this moment because at ATU, every moment brings you one step closer to what comes next. You've got this. Right here, right where you are. Focus on the now, because our focus is on your success. One of the fastest growing universities in the state and the region, Southeastern Oklahoma State University has classes for bachelor's, master's, and certificate programs. Over 45 degree programs are available with in-person, online, and hybrid options. With a legacy of excellence dating back to 1909, our dedicated faculty and staff are here to make your legacy a great one. Your future starts here at Texoma's University. Look at this from Peter. Let's look at it again from Peter. Yeah, Different angle, his, same result. Yeah, he put his face in the rim there, Joey. <laughs> Arkansas Tech, just five steals on the day. But it's what they've done in just slowing down the Northwestern offense. And I think there's, there's something to be said that Northwestern, I don't think they've gotten the looks that they've wanted offensively, but you have to give a lot of credit to what Arkansas Tech has done. They've gotten in the way. They have they have hampered the spacing for the Rangers and not given them the, the looks they want to to be able to set things up. I think what Arkansas Tech has done has been very impressive, and if that's Coach Downey's big thing and his big talking point to get across to them today, they have succeeded there. And they're just one Rangers point ball. down now. Well, and they've, and they've done a great job taking advantage of those turnovers. 13 points off 10 Northwestern turnovers. Tech has more turnovers. They have 12, but the Rangers have turned that to, into just six points. That's a nice drive there by Larry White. Just unadulterated to the rim. Nobody stepped over and cut off the drive. Yeah, I found a seam that hasn't been there earlier. White on the day. I'm not going to say he's been quiet, but he hasn't been particularly loud. Five points. Peter still over when it's not above the rim. Yeah, and I, off the top of my head, can't remember if his lone field goal on his field goals on Thursday were a layup or something outside the paint as well. It's a nice dish there. And Mitchell going to be called for the foul there. Mitchell went up, and definitely the contact was there. We'll get a chance to see this again. Oh, yeah. Yep. I mean, top to bottom. Well, Mark Downey remember, remembers the scouting report. He's saying, that's okay, Shibangu. 34% foul shooter. Not, not a huge deal. Much, much bigger deal for... Arkansas Tech, if you put Brian Free at the line, he's 89%. But Shibangu, 34%. And of course, of course he hits the first one. <laughs> you know, those season numbers are only good for talking points for us. When they get out there, that's where it matters. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 
And he goes two for two, and the, the bench loves it. <laughs> exactly. They're aware of those season numbers, too. Don't be fooled. Well, it's interesting because, like, he, he raises it, then he sort he spins it with his offhand before he shoots it. We saw that yesterday from one of the girls. Who was it that we saw that from one of the women's teams? And the, the free throw was shot while the ball was still moving on the hand. Camerad caught underneath. White reaches in. White will pick up the foul. Camerad will go to the line to shoot two. White picks up his third personal foul. And now it'll be free throws from here on out for both teams. As that was foul number six for the Rangers. Wonder Boys have already hit number nine. Camerad 78% at the free throw line. He and Cassius Brooks, he, they're doing they're doing the lion's share of the scoring today. Brooks is season high, 22 points. Camerad now with 13. That's 30, 35 of the 45, and 36 of the 46. Getting down to crunch time here. Three-point game, 4.15 to go. Oh, it's a nice drive by Milton. He's left it short. Milton with a clear path to the basket, too. Momentum carried him a little bit far. Schaefer. And Schaefer still with a zero in the scoring column. He doesn't have to score to be effective. But it's a little bit different look today. And the foul. Going on trying Mitchell, to get, yeah, trying to get foul. position. That won't result in free throws, but it will take us to our final media timeout. Mitchell picks up another one, number four. Just less than four minutes remaining in this one. Rangers still clinging to a league, and there you see Mitchell clearing a little space. I'll have a time to think about it now during this timeout. If you have the talent and dedication to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity. Everyone tells you to think about the future, but strength, knowledge, and wisdom are what you build along the way. There's power in the process. We value this moment because at ATU, you write your own script to what comes next. So here's your cue. Right here, right where you are. Focus on the now, because our focus is on your success. Josh Mitchell picked up his fourth personal foul, and Coach Mark Downey wasn't having any part of it. From the replay, it appeared to be a fairly easy call, but Coach Downey, frustrated with the way things have been going, his team trailing by three, not in any way an insurmountable lead with as much time as left here in the game. His defense has shown itself to be strong today. The offense, well, it's, I guess the best way to put it, three points short right now. And you're going to get that when you have opportunities like the previous one where Josh Mitchell cleared out some space to try to get open underneath and he picked up his fourth foul. Free, gets Schaefer up in the air. And up Brian and free. in from eight feet in the middle of the lane. Brian Free shows that he can shoot from inside the arc. That's yeah, a nice move there by Brian Free. First points of the second half for Brian Free coming at a crucial moment, making this a two possession game. Brooks, they have taken an extra step. And the fall away jumper is good. The Wonder Boys really needed that basket. Rangers. Yeah, hard to tell where there with that bump that he absorbed. 
But Cassius Brooks, 24 points. He's had a great day today, and Tech has needed every bit of him. Free. Spins around, camera down low, but loses the ball. And Arkansas Tech with a gift. Yeah, that, that's just doing too much there by Larry White. Worst case, he probably gets fouled here as he's going up. Right there, you know, he tried to dump it one too many times to Shibangu. Whereas if he had just taken it right at Sean Cobb, probably was going to the free throw line. And Cobb pitches what you said. He goes straight on up and in. Two quick baskets for Arkansas Tech and the Wonder Boys trail by just a point. Do I feel like Tech is much more comfortable with this situation than Northwestern is as far as like it being 51-50? White slows up, Camerad goes to the court. White's pull up jumper, no good. Kick it back out as the shot clock resets and Cameron McDowell, those are two big points. We haven't mentioned his name a lot, especially late in the contest and that's a big basket in the lane. Yeah, great, great take. You see that body control as he just glides around Sean Cobb there and puts it in with the right hand, which is, you know, his offhand. That's his offhand there, he's a left-handed shooter. so. McDowell putting that in with the right hand, giving Northwestern a three-point lead with two minutes to go. Northwestern is 38% in the second half, Tech 32%. Joy, it hadn't, hasn't been pretty offense. A very different game, especially for Northwestern after shooting 52% from the field in yesterday's win over Southwestern. No, it, it, it has been different for them. And so we see what they're able to do when the tables are turned like that. They're showing us in front of the conference right now they can play in a game that, uh, well, not an ugly game, but it's a, it's a little more, it's a little physical in there right now. And both these teams, I think, invite that. Yeah, no doubt about it. Tech has relied on their defense a lot of the season. I mean, they, they're they a good offensive team. They're seventh in the nation in three-point percentage, 40%. They make nine a game. Hadn't been the case today. They're just four of 18 from three-point range today. A lot of that, Taylor Peters struggles. He's 44% with 81 makes coming in to the tournament this weekend. He's been, you know, ineffective offensively, and you know, he's still on the bench right now. You know what? I mean, you can't you can't talk about Tech's performance this weekend without talking about Taylor Peters' limited availability. That's exactly right. It's been key. And and you you pick up that superlative at the start of the weekend, player of the year. I think people expect you know, they're going to see some big things in the conference tournament. We haven't had that chance yet, and not through any fault really of his own. Cobb, shot blocked by Shibangu. Well, and partially blocked by Shibangu, partially blocked by the blue pad under the backboard. <laughs> he spun into the baseline and just ran out of real estate. That was a good move. Wonder Boys. Just didn't get the space. Ooh, McDowell McDowell got that cut on his hip a little bit. Yeah. Ooh, oh, a lot of contact push there, by goodness. Love, Love can't get the shot to fall and the nice rebound. by Cameron to block the save. Yeah, and it, there was a lot for Tech to overcome there, giving up the, the shove by Love to get a little bit of space. They come away with the basketball anyway. This will be a 30 and Northwestern's women's team watching right now. They fell to Southwestern yesterday in the rivalry game. Only higher seeded team to fall in the course of both sets of semi or quarterfinals. 53-50 now. Clock down to a minute 13 of game time. And even so, neither of these teams really in a hurry. They, they are allowing the shot clock to wind down late in this game, not trying to make anything happen in a hurry. Well, watch, watch this replay here. Taylor Peter. Mark Downey having a little exchange, telling Mitchell to go, and you know, Peter, you know, he's he's just not coming in right now, and you know, Mark Downey not putting him in the ball game in this situation. 113 to go, down three, and you know, clearly Peter is ailing a lot more than he's letting on, and you know, Mark Downey at least recognizes that, and is going with guys who, you know, are in a better place health-wise right now. Brooks 
Starts and stops twice. Gives to Cameron to the basket. Mark Downey wanting that to be an and one opportunity. I think that's the right call. Yes, I agree. Foul happens on the foul court. Happens yeah, well, it, before well before that. we saw the replay right there. I mean, if you're going to say that's on Love, obviously, the shot taken there. You know, is, is Camerad going into his gather right there? Probably. It's pretty close. But I think that's the right call. You know, if this was the NBA, obviously. Well, insert your favorite NBA, you know, continuation call there. First free throw made, though, so really it, it works out. It's a wash as Camerad makes the first and makes the second. So it's a one-point game. 59 seconds left. Milton out there for ball handling in place of Shibangu. As you know, Tech's, Tech's going to turn up the pressure right here. See if they can get a steal in the backcourt, but plenty of time. Can't give up a three here. Marquise Milton, Kennedy Milton in the game. Free. As well as Love and McDowell for Northwestern. So you got, by one. So you got ball handlers all over the court right now. Man to man defense offered up by Arkansas Tech. Milton driving around at Love in the corner. Shot clock down to 10. Clears out a little bit. Wants some space. Can't get the shot to fall. Great board by Camerad. Love, a little bit of a, a space clearing operation with that left arm. And Arkansas Tech now. Trailing by just one with a great opportunity, less than 30 seconds remaining. We keep it right here in Shawnee. Well, that's that right there by Josh Mitchell, the Defensive Player of the Year in the Great American Conference. Excellent job. Love challenges him. He drives in from the corner, challenges him right into his chest. Mitchell does a great job staying vertical, absorbing the contact, forcing the errant shot. And Camerad, Johnny on the spot, grabbing that rebound, being ready. and. Tech has an opportunity to win it here. And looking looking at the huddle still, Taylor Peter still standing up there, not coming into the ball game here with 30 seconds left. You know, I mean, I know Peter might be hurting, might be ailing, but man, if I'm Mark Downey, I at least might have him out there, maybe even just as a decoy. But clearly with him standing up in this huddle, he, he's not coming into the ball game for this play. Well, and we've seen it. At one thing we know for sure from Peter, he can get up to the rim. He does have that ability to get up to the rim. In the meantime, Arkansas Tech, this is a team that was here on Thursday. It came down to the wire, a two-point victory over Harding. This is the place you want to be in, Luke, to have the ball in this position. The defense has done its part all day long for Arkansas Tech. It's allowed the Wonder Boys to be in a place to inbound with 23 seconds left on the shot clock. Trailing by one. Peter on the bench. Schaefer with the ball. Brooks driving. And he was fouled as he went up. Foul on the pass from the official Marquise Milton. So it is a one and one. Second Brooks eight. five for five at the free throw line today, 71%. Yeah, you see the little grab there by Milton. It's the right call. And smart play there by Tech. So Peter comes in now for defense as Tanner checks out. Peter, an excellent defender, second in the league and steals coming into the tournament with 54. At, at length, length and speed as well. Brooks makes the first. So he will get a second opportunity and the ball game is tied. White has checked in meanwhile for the Rangers. And a small thing, but an important thing. Tech went early enough in the clock to where if something went south, they'd still have plenty of time to foul and extend the game. Didn't put all their eggs in the last second basket. Northwestern now, shot clock is off. The Rangers now trailing by one. They bring the ball past half court and call a timeout as well. It's a reset. Rangers going to inbound to our right on the sideline here on the far side of the benches. And Joey, if you are Northwestern, who are you looking at right here? Well, you've seen what Free can do. Obviously, they don't need the three-point shot. 
just working it in. I think that's one of the reasons you bring White back in. Get a look at one good side. White can go quickly to the basket. And for Arkansas Tech, Mitchell has those four fouls. Might not be relevant with 15.1 seconds left. What you need for Mitchell is just one good defensive stand. But White was in the contest. Three also in the contest. McDowell, who has started to come alive a little bit. And Kennedy Milton, Marquise Milton now. Marquise Milton. And you've got really five. stepped up in the in late in the contest yesterday. This is a great lineup out here for Northwestern. Yes. I mean, you got five guys. Any one of them could get going downhill and get to the basket. Need to make a move quickly. Seven seconds. Six. Marquise Milton. Two dribbles. Spins around in the corner. Milton for three. Off and the rebound. Can't find it. Arkansas Tech escapes. Regular season champions. The Wonder Boys will advance to take on Southern Nazarene in the championship game tomorrow afternoon. And it was the look that Northwestern wanted, had the opportunity in the corner. Milton. Yeah, wide open look for Kennedy Milton. Just a little too strong. A little frustrated and rightfully so. Season comes to an end here in Shawnee. Had the look he wanted. And it's one of those you're going to think about for a little while. Couldn't get the rebound and the put back. I, I would say waited a little bit long to get the play started. However, that still being the case, you got the look you wanted. We'll take a break. We're going to come back in a moment. Wrap things up here from the men's semifinals, Fire Lake Arena. Running outdoors, you got to take what nature gives you. We'd like to say we run when they don't. So we want to give you products to be able to run when you don't think you should run, when it's pouring rain outside, it's snowing. We're going to have products for you to get out there. You don't get better sitting on your butt not training. You got to get out there and run. At Under Armour, it's always about premium textiles. They need to perform. They need to be the best. The merging of hybrid textiles with naturals and new seaming and bonding and super sleek, modern, fast, futuristic designs. That's where we are really going to turn it up a notch. If you look good and you feel good, you're going to perform better. Two well contested semifinals here on semifinal Saturday. And the number two seeded Arkansas Tech needed every bit of the 54 points they got to come away with a victory today. Wonder Boys with a one point win over Northwestern, 54-53. Great defensive performance and got just enough offense when they needed it. And a big portion of that offense came from Cassius Brooks. Samantha Roop has an opportunity to visit with him. I know you scored the winning point. What does that mean to you? Uh, it means a lot just being uh, up with my teammates and be out there and just go get a win and keep fighting through the whole thing. Being the leading scorer today with 26, did you have that mindset going in that you needed to be the leading scorer today? Nah, I really had a match. I just wanted to go out there and play hard, and just give it all I got because it's win to go home and play out. It wasn't really about scoring today. It's just about playing hard. In the last time out, I heard your coach talking about defensive pressure. What did he say? Uh, just rebound. We got to rebound. Good shots. Stay in front of our man and just, just be in gaps. Help each other. And we do this all year. Defense win us games and we just got it done. Southern Nazarene tomorrow. What do you need to change or do better to win that tomorrow? Uh, trust our coaches. Trust what the game plan they got prepared for us. They swept us in the regular season. So we're gonna be a, it's going to be a big one for us tomorrow. We're going to come out and play hard. Okay. Well, good luck and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Joey, back to you. Thank you, Samantha, with Cassius Brooks, 26 points, and she talked about the game-winning shots, seven for seven from the free throw line. He hit when he needed to there at the end. Got those two big free throws. Camerad also had two big free throws at the end. Absolutely. Cassius Brooks, absolute nails today. Eight of 15 from the field, a season high.
season-high 26 points. And like you said, perfect seven of seven at the line today and none bigger than the game-winning free throws there with 19 seconds left. Luke, defense reflected with the, the field goal percentage right there, 37 and 35, and it really wasn't just bad shots. I think it was just good defense that forced them. Absolutely, and you know, two defensive teams, Tech number one in field goal percentage defense, the Rangers number four in field goal percentage defense in the regular season, and you know, they, they both played extremely well defensively this afternoon and so both teams a lot to be proud of today heartbreaking for northwestern it's been a heartbreaking two days it's for, for northwestern northwestern dropping a you know in the final minute to southwestern last night on the women's side and then here this afternoon the last second loss to arkansas tech on the men's side just a tough weekend for the rangers but tech doing enough to get the job done and that's been the theme for the wonder boys through two games as they head into the finals and kids if you saw that last stat up there at home one thing i want to remind you a one point game northwestern shot 69 percent from the free throw line they lost arkansas tech shot 94 percent from the free throw line they won free throws are important kids we're going to take a break we'll be back with the women's semifinals coming up 545 it'll be top seeded southern nazarene taking on henderson state on the gac sports network Thank you.